how's it going, everybody? Welcome back. Return to the cool zone. A, fr a Friday in the cool zone. So, took the, the week off or whatever from streaming. It's a little break, recharge. We're gonna get back to uh, making some of this kind of like daily, um, just kind of sketching or like playing around with Houdini. Uh, maybe like a style frame or like daily uh, Instagram daily art or whatever. Um, so I was just messing around here with the the uh, Maxon noise nodes or whatever with, with Redshift. So this stuff is all displacement, like render time displacement. It seems pretty... Uh, the, the noise types that you have here with the, the Redshift stuff is a lot more interesting than... Uh, like the old ones. So they're old ones. I think it was just like RS noise. These ones were pretty pretty boring or whatever. But I was just playing around with that. Uh, we're gonna start with a new, completely new scene. Um, gonna be doing some simulation um, stuff to, to kind of sculpt our, our geometry with the simulation. We'll get rid of this. Don't need that. And uh, we'll just open up a fresh scene. So I tried to make some changes to my, my OBS settings. Hopefully it runs a little bit better. Um, I don't know if it will help, but I tried to s turn off the hardware encoding, basically trying to make it so it's not using the GPU. Um, so then when I'm using Redshift to render, hopefully it doesn't completely crash my FPS. So we just have an empty geometry container here. Um, people sometimes make those just, it's like a quick way to get into the SOP level so you can make uh, geometry nodes and all that stuff. And then I'm gonna use the grain source node. So I'm gonna turn this shape into kind of powder or something like that. Um, Okay, go a little bit lower with these point separation. So a million, a million particles might be a good, somewhat good starting point. It might be a little bit high, so we, we might want to back off a little bit if it gets to be a little bit slow. Um, and then what I'm planning to do here is make kind of like a powder dust style Thing. Like I wanted to make an object and have it slowly cracking or uh, breaking into like little pieces. So sometimes you see it with like cosmetic photography. Maybe like a stylist would have. This thing's pretty cool right here. Um, it's like this. I don't know what it's exactly called. It's like foundation or something. But this is kind of what I'm interested in. Is like these granular kind of stuff and how it's clumping together in some areas and, and breaking up in others and stuff like that. This looks like another good, uh, some good references here. So you can see some completely solid chunks and then some little like particulate uh, breakups and stuff like that. So we'll try to control some of that stuff with attributes. Um, if we go to on my website, my old website, I had a uh, blog post. It basically outlines or 
it's just like a cheat sheet um, stores the different useful attributes not only for SOPs or just like the commonly used ones it's kind of like a reference sheet um, there's also for all the different I don't have the newer DOP um, simulation stuff in here yet like vellum and some of that stuff but with grains you can see the different attributes that we can control uh, the simulation with so basically these are parameters that are on the solver and we can use uh, these parameters where you can use these attributes to control the parameters at a point level so instead of having like a global setting of traction stiffness mr wazoo greetings so instead of like just a global setting of target stiffness um you could read here like some of this stuff attraction stiffness is how how strongly particles stick to each other um so instead of just having a global setting you can override it or modulate it at a point level and have uh, varying non-uniform uh, clumping so we can use this let's just control c i'm just going to do a wrangle Put that in there it's yelling at me just because i don't have a not finishing my my uh, code statement so we have that one that we're going to be using and then we have uh traction weight as well so we'll grab that one so we have how strongly nearby particles stick to each other and how much the particles will naturally stick to, together when close. It's kind of, I think, I don't know, it's kind of redundant. I'm not exactly sure specifically what, what each parameter is affecting, but they both work together. Um, and then to modify them, we'll just use a noise. So to visualize the noise, I'll set it to the color, a color diffuse. Um, so CD will set it equal to maybe this O noise. It's like original, the O stands for original uh, Perlin noise. Um, so if I do that, we have a noise being generated. We don't need it to be a color. We don't need it to be a three dimensional noise. So we can just force it to be a scalar black and white noise. Just put float. So now this function knows to generate just a single dimension or a single value of noise instead of three components. Um, and then another thing that we can do, this, this O noise, I'm using it because it supports some extra arguments or parameters. So we can set a roughness amount. Um, maybe, I think first we need to set the octaves. So this is like how many layers of noise to, to create. And then uh, we'll set the roughness. And then the last one is attenuation. I usually just set that to one and uh, ignore it. So you can see with this, now we have more, more detail. So with just the one octave or how it was start doing stuff originally, maybe it's even just zero. Um, it's just like one layer of noise and then using these extra octaves it's basically making more uh, refined like higher frequency noise and layering it on top in a in a nice way um so we're going to use this to basically drive or control these attributes get some more interesting uh, distribution of of uh, physical settings or, or materials across our grains so we have cd move some stuff around here all right so we have our color we're just setting it to a noise um, we might want to fit this just to do like a remapping so our minimum source value will be uh, 0 0.1 maximum 
0 0.2, and then we'll just remap that to 0 and 1. So we're kind of just changing the range. Anything below this value will be black. Anything above this will be white. Um, and then let's just start to put these into um, our attributes. So we'll set this. I'm just gonna copy this, paste it again. It's a little bit lazy to like compute these noise functions multiple times, but it's uh, just something we're doing like as we're setting up the simulation, so it's not a big deal. And then this attraction weight, um, I'm just gonna grab it and set this to stiffness. So now if we look, we have these extra attributes. Um, you can also visualize them using this color node. So I could just do ramp from attribute, look at attraction stiffness, then they also have this gear if you want to do like extra fancy visualizations or whatever. Um, and then just to get started with the simulation, I usually do pop network. So instead of dot network, this pop network gets us started with like a little extra, little more nodes. That we have less stuff that we need to create. Um, this one's and it's already set up to grab the, the first context or the first input. Uh, the Houdini is 18.0416. I think it's also in the Twitch panels below my my stream, but I, th I don't know. I feel like they redid their uh, Twitch redesigned their layout or something. I haven't adapted or refined my uh, settings for it yet. So emission type, I set it to all geometry. So just in, in case you have constraints with grains, it, that needs to be all geometry because the constraints aren't points. Um, so we're good on that. And then under birth for impulse, this would basically, like if I connect my particles, um, turn off that visualization. So what, what's happening now, nothing's moving, but if I'm looking at this geometry, like particle count, every frame we're sourcing or creating all of those input particles or grains. Or I guess they're just particles right now because we haven't set everything up. So under birth, just set this dollar sign SF equals one. So this is just saying on the very first frame of the simulation, SF is for simulation frame, uh, source or activate this uh, emission. So we're good with that. And then uh, pop grains, we just add that. And this is basically extra functionality. It's like a micro solver or extra it's doing some extra math to apply the grain behavior to, to the particles. And then I'm just going to do a ground plane so that we have something for this stuff to land on. Merge, just make sure that this guy's on the left. The left stuff affects the right input. And then we can just make some gravity with the pop force. We'll put that guy right in. Oops. Sometimes I, you just have to make sure like it can be misleading that these guys didn't get wired in. We'll just set this to the standard earth gravity. And then if I play the simulation, it's <laughs> kind of boring. Things are broken and stuff like that. So the, the first problem is that we don't have enough sub steps, I believe. Uh, when you're using the shelf tools, this min and max sub steps will get defaulted to 10. Um, for grains, you just generally need some more sub steps to, for the solver to kind of figure out the collisions and uh, all the different interactions and stuff like that. You can see that's fixing a little bit of our collisions. Um, they aren't as like steppy as they were before. The other thing I'm gonna do is just make a transform. I'm gonna lift this shape up just so it's not starting, like already penetrating through the ground. 
Um, then maybe do like a slight rotation so it's not completely axis aligned. Then this guy will automatically like pull in all the objects, this asterisk, it's like a wild card. But if we just want the grains, those are particles or pop object. So you just do pop asterisk. So it looks like maybe my, my 1 million particles is just a bit slow. So I'm just gonna move that up to uh, 0 0.02. So now we're just at 100,000 particles. And then if I go to pop grains, those uh, settings that I was, the attributes that I was adding, if you look under clumping, and you hover your mouse over it, you could see that the actual parameter name, attraction weight, and attraction stiffness. This is what they, those are kind of modulating. Um, but the way that they affect these parameters is that they get multiplied with the setting that you have on the solver. So right now I have zero being multiplied by this white or bright uh, kind of value, zero to one. So it will just always be zero. So if I want this to actually have an effect, I need to kind of set it to one to basically say enable clumping. Um, and then stiffness, 10 is a little bit low to start out with. I just usually like max that guy out as well. So now if we play the simulation again, we should hopefully see some, some clumping. So it might be hard to see. You can kind of see some areas here that are sticking together a little bit more than others. Um, I'm just going to add another zero here, increase the, the stiffness even more. Uh, and then the other thing that is generally a problem with grains is that like the default settings, all of this stuff is like, it's like you dropped it on an ice rink. Or it's just sliding around forever. Uh, so what I'm what I usually do to fix that issue, like if I go to, I'm just gonna click the, the watch icon down there. This stuff is, it's on like an air hockey table or something like that, and it just slides around forever. So under friction with static and scale kinetic, I usually bring these up a little bit more. So with grains, this is where you usually change friction, like how much the force uh, decreases or dampens over time when it's contacting the, the ground or other collision geometry. So now you can see it's skidding to, to a halt more quickly. Um, so this way we're able to just get like a better kind of composition. I don't know, it always looks a, a little bit weird, like unrealistic when stuff is just drifting away forever. Like, it's like, unreal. I don't know, it's dropping stuff on ice. It just doesn't look that real. Uh, and then the solver is set up to use OpenCL. So it's pretty nice. It's using your graphics card to do all these iterations. Um, if you catch my drift. <laughs> So, so you could even turn these iterations up maybe to like 120 um, and what that does it doesn't really slow things down that much if, if you're using OpenCL and you have a good, pretty good graphics card but what those extra iterations do is it allows for better like stacking and uh, collisions and stuff like that so you can see without those when I was just doing 20 iterations these clumps were flattening out a lot more. They weren't, the particles weren't staying stacked that well. So if we want these pieces to kind of appear rigid or to stay uh, structured pretty well, you generally just add some more constraint iterations. So basically that's saying, it's kind of misleading because we don't have any constraints, but it's basically just like how many passes or how many times to run this, this pop grains solver. Um, so we could try maybe even like 220. Let's see, looks like maybe we're getting a little bit slow. You have to be a bit careful because like we're running this solver with six sub steps. So basically those 
numbers multiplier, you're doing like six, uh, six steps of 220 iterations per frame or whatever. It's like the, you, you can get carried away pretty quickly. So maybe 220 is just a bit much. Let's just go to 100. Um, I think we're, we're in pretty good shape. Sometimes I just press the L key. It's like a hot key to lay things out. And we could try going, gonna decrease the point separation just to make, make these a uh, little bit higher, be like 700,000 particles. Looks like I'm pretty good. I'm not dropping frames or anything yet. So if anyone's just come in, we're basically trying to make a kind of granular breakup, like some of these cosmetic still life photographies. I'm not exactly sure what what the name is of that kind of uh, powder or material or whatever it is. So I don't know, maybe this is a good kind of reference so you can like clearly see a defined shape and then it's just slowly transitioning into more finer details or whatever. We ran this simulation, it's still happening pretty quickly. I don't know, we might be getting like two seconds per frame or something like that. Um, sometimes what I'll do at the end is then ditch the color attribute just because that's a, a little bit closer to what I'm going to be rendering things as. Um, if I do the D hotkey under over the viewport, then I can change geometry, um, decrease this point size down to one, so you can see more of the, the detail. And then under scene, if you want, you can do more anti-alias samples, so you get these these things uh, behaving a little bit better. So this is pretty cool. We have some some of these bigger guys pushing stuff aside. Um, and already we're getting some some interesting behavior. Sometimes you still have some unnatural stuff, like these big big ones are doing the air hockey, the drift. Um, you could increase. I might try to increase my friction a little bit more. Maybe we'll just go up to one for static and 0.75 for scale kinetic. And the other thing you were kind of paying attention, I'm just gonna switch this to light backdrop for right now, just so I can see the black ones. Um, these these black areas were all receiving a value of no stiffness or like no uh, attraction, no clumping. So they were just all going into dust. So we had a harsh transition between um, these large clumps staying together and then this stuff was just pure powder. We look, this stuff there's like different levels of breakup and things like that. So kind of want to set up our noise values to represent that a little bit better. Um, so just gonna keep working here. Basically 
add another level of noise, but this is going to get added to things. Um, I'm going to add the value to the position. So this will sample things in a different region. Um, it basically just offsets the noise. Then if I multiply that by four, then you can see we're getting like higher frequency noise that's being sampled in a different region. And I'm gonna move my range around. And then the last, the, the value that it's remapping to, instead of going to one, maybe we just go to 0.1. So you can see I'm kind of like trying to, we have our first iteration of noise that we're doing here. It's the broad, strong regions. Alyssa, good afternoon. How are you doing? Doing well? So we have our kind of main chunk areas and then this is like a more subtle uh, region, kind of like that. I'm doing good, we're just hanging out, playing around, drafting up something, something fun. And then maybe even my minimum at zero. Maybe I never want my clump clumpiness to ever just be completely like non-existent. Uh, so I'll just do like 0 0.075 or something like that. So now nothing will ever be completely like fuzzy or, or non-sticky essentially. So we can give this one another try. Um, just save this, and make sure we don't crash or something bad doesn't happen. This is still the same month, 12. Alex, how's it going? Been waiting all week. Do a scenes directory. Um, I'll just do this <clears throat> grain powder version one, and then do a flip book. Just get started with that. So yeah, if people are just coming in or whatever. We're doing another Instagram. Just kind of draft. Uh, style frame, play around or whatever. Um, setting up the grains right now to trying to achieve this kind of physical properties or, or materials. The Twitch is killing you? How is Twitch killing you, Alex? Some, maybe the new interface is broken? This stuff is pretty cool. Uh, it depends. It depends what I'm doing. Uh, wrangles are generally quicker, I find, to set up just because I don't know. It's like less clicking and less jumping around and stuff like that. But if it's uh, if it's a more in depth where I'm like starting to layer a lot of different noise functions, then Vops starts to become a little bit easier. Uh, just because it's more like visual kind of compositing and stuff like that. But uh, I, I, I don't know, I just find, I try to use wrangles if possible. Just because it's easier to like copy and paste lines of code and use them in different scenes and, and reuse stuff. Whereas like with Vops, uh, copying and pasting those nodes, it gets to, just gets to be like very, Frustrating, you have to like reconnect all the wires and, and do a bunch of stuff like that. There's like a little bit of bounciness that's weird. Um, and then it looks like my... Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know if it's the best workflow or the best way for people to learn or whatever, but it's just the way that I get things done the fastest basically, or I don't know. Sometimes I'll just work in like silly ways or try new stuff just to like keep 
keep it interesting, I guess. I don't know. I, I'm not a fan of always like taking the exact same steps to do something. I, I don't know. I like to try out different, uh, different things to see what happens. So I'm going to increase the roughness of this noise. Maybe we want to do more octaves. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of look at it like cooking. If you're if you have like recipes and you're you're always like tweaking the recipe a little bit or seeing if you could get a better result instead of just always like doing the exact same steps as I don't know. I'm I'm not a guy to like follow the uh, the cookbook though. So what I'm trying to do here is just increase the extra layer of. Uh, of uh, like higher frequency noise, just to get more more interesting breakup. So like right now, we still just kind of only see these bigger chunks, but I'm hoping to get closer to, where did it go? Just more variation or whatever in, in chunks that you can see. So I'm not really super worried about like composition or anything like that. Right now, this is more of like the tool building uh, stage of things. So I'm basically just trying to do this as like a test brick or whatever. Uh, I might replace this with other geometry in the future. But for right now, I'm just trying to get a sense of like the settings and uh, kind of like making the tools and then usually after I find stuff that's working, then I'll like actually sit down and properly design the shot with lighting and different geometry and stuff like that. So it looks looks like we're getting a little bit better bumps. What do you think? It's a little better. possible we, we need to try to make even more uh, smaller ones so I might just add another layer I'm just gonna keep copy and pasting this um, you know offset it to a different region and then make this one even higher frequency of P position uh, but this one I'm gonna notch my range to be higher so I can comment these ones out if I just want to maybe I can't add it uh, if I just want to visualize this one layer the one thing that I'm doing so I'm trying to just make these little super sharp kind of chunks that are gonna stick together And then I want this one to stay at zero. So everything isn't just gradually like getting brighter and brighter over time. Then maybe this maybe this one goes up even to like 4.5. So it's like pretty high contrast. So it's kind of like a HDRI image or something like that. Like sometimes you want these values to go higher than one just to get more interesting settings seems like at the start like just working between zero and one with one noise is like a kind of just not that interesting of a noise or, or a result and then as, as we're adding these extra noises we're getting more contrast more detail more more structures and stuff like that that's too bad that your, your uh, twitch chat wasn't working Alex is it it's good. It's, it's working now. It's good to see you. I don't know. Twitch redid their layout and stuff like that. They might have broken some stuff. It's 
so now, I don't know, as, looks like we, we're getting some more interesting breakup. going on over here. It's a little weird that those guys all fell apart. No box to write in. So we might need maybe a little bit more friction or something like that. I'm going to go in and add a little bit more friction. Sorry if there was ads. I tried to turn all that stuff off. So I think maybe static threshold will go to 2. Scale kinetic to 1.75. And then my particles, maybe instead of like 4.5, it was a little bit high. So I'm just going to go to 2 with this one. Um, I'm just going to go up a little bit higher with my point size so that we can kind of visualize the clumps and stuff like that a little bit better. Um, then might be able to get get by with like go up to 1 million 1.3 million 1 point close to 1.4 you guys saw the PlayStation 5 uh, unveil. Looked like they were doing some something with grains. I don't know where the. Maybe it was just this trailer. So I think this kind of stuff they do it with. Uh, I'm not sure if it was Houdini, but some a grain solver in some software. And then I think they're doing something with like this color is like a visualization of similar to what I'm doing with the noise here. You can change maybe gravity or different properties or stuff like that with uh, with those settings. It's pretty cool. I think it's all all Houdini that they did this in. I'm wondering if it was, I think the guy's name who's doing this, like he's been doing this kind of stuff for four, four or five years, I've seen him posting interesting stuff. I think it's like Maxim, this is, yeah, that's a, hard for me to spell. So I'm not sure if they, I don't know if they contracted him directly to do that or if it was like, they just, used it heavily as, as reference frames and, and things like that. If it, if it wasn't him that did it, it's pretty it's a pretty big uh, theft of, of work. But yeah, I don't know about the design. It looks pretty pretty odd. But yeah, this stuff here is super cool. So I think all that stuff you could do pretty Pretty easily with the grain solver um, some of this other forces and things like that would be a little bit more complex to, to set up it's like the exact same thing right here <laughs> 
All right. So I made a mistake, maybe taking that color out or visualizing it like this. But it looks like we're getting some better breakup and, and distribution and stuff like that. So I'm going to say we're good to move forward. Um, I'm going to try to get maybe some interesting geometry or something like that. So if I just go to Google, um, if you go to this sample and hold, you search for it. Uh, this is like a company that does 3D scanning for people, objects, artifacts, holy crowns, sculptures. Um, so they provide this as a service to people. But if you go to their downloads section, they offer some like free samples and stuff like that. So this, I think that they have, their stuff might be a little bit higher um, kind of resolution than the uh, 3D scans stuff that we were using last time. So sometimes I'll use these. So I was just grabbing that plaster head. I'm just gonna pull it in. double zip to this folder. Alright, I think we're good to go. And sometimes I just drag and drop the path into uh, my shell and then copy and paste it from there. So it's, these, these things are pretty high resolution scans, but um, a little bit slow to work with but it's nice to have like that extra detail and stuff like that that's cool i don't know it already has some detail from like being broken and, and stuff like that i think they usually put their kind of like a watermark or whatever um so just to get it to the same relative scale that we were working at before just do this match size um scale uniform So now we just make sure it's like the same size as this box that we were working with. And then, I'm just gonna plug the grain source directly into it. This might be a bit of a slow cook, just because this is a much higher resolution shape. Um, and then because this shape isn't a complete box, like we were doing before, there's a lot of empty area. We can increase our resolution to get back to where we were with like our overall particle count. So now we're at like 1.6 million. Our noises still look cool. Might not need to go up this high. So basically like I don't want to waste time simulating frames right before. So I'm just trying to get him as close to the, the ground as possible. Maybe I'm going to make some rotations here. So I want his face area to be like somewhat intact when he falls down. Because um, that's what's going to make it most readable when you look at like the, the end result. I want still see some of his features like eyes or, or nose or something like that still intact. So we'll try something like that and see what happens. So 
So there's some other stuff here that's cool to play around with as well. So we might want to add some user controls or whatever to, to maybe mask out this noise, like be able to control it with shapes or fall offs or stuff like that. Um, we'll see what we get with this, this result right here, but it's possible like just to, to be able to art direct the fractures or like the, the shards or whatever. Looks like somehow we lost. Our, our stickiness it's not <laughs> it's not staying together as well so let's let's examine this a little bit further maybe it's just like trying to bounce again. I'm gonna back off on these settings just to sort out those uh, those issues. I don't know. It might have been that we were working. Maybe we need more more sub steps. Cause this is this is looking quite nice, but uh, just doesn't have the resolution that we need. possible sometimes like if you just work at too small of a scale things start to fall apart um, let me think so I'm, what I'm gonna do is just double the size of him before we convert to grains gonna have to take this point separation a little bit higher so we have a half million So we'll see if this fixes the problem. Sometimes if you you have like millions of particles and you're all creating them really small, you lose like precision or it's just too, it's too, uh, it's just not a good idea generally to work at a super small scale like that with a lot of points. This might be a little bit better. Um, one thing we can do, I think, is just do a copy to points with spheres. So this is just a quick way to kind of visualize the, the grains. It might start to get a little bit slow if we uh, work with millions and millions, but for right now, I think it's okay. Uh, and then I'm, I'll just cash this out as a flip book. I'm gonna get some water. I'll be right back. It's somewhat cool. So we just want this stuff to stay together a little bit better. So 
So I'm gonna go back to my settings. I'm gonna add up drag. So this just adds some dampening kind of overall to the particles. Um, I'm gonna go to the pop grains, increase these overall constraint iterations, and then maybe our overall stiffness. So with those three changes that I did, um, I'm thinking that they should help get This got so slow. And I'm just too many of those. Could just be like too many spears trying to draw. Um, so with those three changes I did, the overall stiffness, I'm trying to do that to boost clumping. And then all those other changes with pop drag uh, and the more iterations should also help kind of assist the solver or let it figure that stuff out a little bit more. So the drag should should just dampen all of the forces unless things should spring apart or bounce or like jiggle and stuff like that. Um, constraint iterations is just what I was saying earlier. Let the let it have more opportunities to fix the stacking and solve collisions and stuff like that. So when you're not doing enough constraint iterations, it will miss collisions and that's what causes things to fall and flatten out. Um, then when you have enough constraint iterations that you can get nice stacking and interesting uh, layouts or whatever. So now it's looking a little bit better. His face is completely staying together. So with the pop drag, it, it should also keep this stuff from really like spraying and shooting out. We might have too much. It looks like some of this stuff is a little bit weird. Like we want it to spread out a little bit. It's just like completely stopping right now. So we'll just try to fix those issues. See if we, we solved it. <laughs> this boy. <laughs> just crumbling so what we'll do is uh just do like 0.25 for our drag or air resistance um, and then on the pop grains i'm just gonna go a little bit lower on these uh, friction settings So it looks like, I don't know, these these frames are taking like somewhere between two, five seconds or something like that. It's still not that bad. So it looks like we're getting some more spread, which is nice. We just compared the two uh, flipbooks. We might want to tweak like the frequency of our noises um, or just rotate him to, to be landing a little bit differently so he can get his, like I want his face features to be in the center of this pile. Um, I think that'll be a more interesting composition. Yes, yeah, so I'm trying to make it lay out like <laughs> so you can still read some of the features. Uh, and if anyone's just joining this uh, 
This is kind of my references or like material stuff I'm trying to make. Just like this powdery cosmetics grains or whatever that um, the powder clings together, clumps together in certain areas. So we can still see his, his face. But then this guy is, uh, was getting it from this website. So it's like a plaster sculpture, like an old artifact that's uh, crumbling apart over time. So we're getting some, some nice stuff with his face sticking together. Um, I don't want to recalculate all my noises right now. I'm just going to do some, some rotations here. So I'm doing this rotation repositioning after the noise is calculated. So it's not going to change the uh, pattern that we get from it. Um, then I'm just going to try to re drop, just drop him from a different orientation to try to get uh, the pattern when he when he spreads out, just to look a little bit nicer. Maybe real gentle. Just really, really lay him down to bed. And sometimes you can have a little bit of, of penetration uh, with the ground plane, like the solver on the first frame will fix it. But if you do too much, it's it uh, can cause errors and stuff like that. Let's, let's get this. So now we're slowly getting more into the territory of like shot design, layout, composition, and stuff like that. Just like you're, just like you're baptizing this boy. It's a real dip. <laughs> just really <laughs> put him right to sleep. So this, I think it's starting to be. <laughs> A little bit cooler now with uh, the stuff breaking up and rolling off like it's more like his hair or something like that so that's what I meant when I was saying we just rotate it make him the center of the uh, the pile we might want some more friction to keep this stuff closer closer in the frame like if you're thinking about how you want to, to photograph this uh, you might not want this stuff just like sliding all over the place. It's a little bit messy. And then more friction as well should help keep his, his features from rolling or sliding off the pile. So let's try those changes. So I don't want to go too high. It's like a balance. So you can see what was happening before. Try another camera. You could do that holy water like <laughs> I don't know, it would be like a wet wet he would be turning into wet mud or something like that. <laughs> His brain's just leaking out. So with the additional, I don't know, it's hard for me to tell. We might need more like constraint iterations. This, this area here is still pretty nice. So I might do a, a bit of a, a cheat we're a bit of a hack. So I think we just have a little bit too much volume overall. Um, so if I just do this, we're not, I'm not planning to do this right now, at least as like a full animation. We're just using the solver as like a sculpting tool. So if I eliminate some, some of the extra grains, not only will, will our simulation run faster, um, but it will also just help with our composition to be less 
like less messy so we just have less volume or less amount of, of particles that we're, we're rolling around. Uh, so we'll do this. There's different ways to, to realign to the ground. I'm just going to try to do it with this match size. Um, I don't want to change X or Z. And then just with Y, if you just do minimum, that will set it on the ground. So now, regardless of how much I cut off, it will always just automatically put it right on the ground. So what I meant by that in terms of optimization, like we have four, almost 500,000. And then after that, we go down to like half the amount. So this will just make everything run faster, or in the end, we'll be able to get a finer detail or resolution. And then maybe here we'll go up to eight sub steps and 200 constraint iterations. So with those changes, I'm just trying to get uh, some better like clumping and, and friction and stuff like that happening. So it's possible maybe we don't want to drop him from right starting on the ground. Maybe we want to give it a little bit of a a drop. There was some nice stuff happening with this. That stuff that over there kind of like flings off. We'll, we'll just see what happens. Alright, I'm gonna... Whoops! <laughs> We're gonna rethink this a little bit. So I'm not gonna do that. Match size. And maybe my clip, uh, I'm gonna introduce like a little bit of a direction just so it's not completely parallel with the ground. So now we'll still have more variation in the breakup like that area that's lower right there should shoot out a little bit further. All right, let's give this a try. I don't know what this stuff is called. Does anyone know what this, the powder? I feel like it's called foundation, I don't know. Uh, I'm just trying to do a layout for, so it's just gonna be, this is close to like the end result I'm trying to get. Um, we'll just have like the, fa the facial features still intact. Uh, turning into powder, kind of like these these reference images. Like this this kind of break up here, I guess. I don't know, I got got some weird stuff happening. He's running away. So let's put this. I don't know what the best way is to, sometimes I do this just to find more, uh, just to narrow my results or whatever. So it might be we're dropping him from too high. Sometimes if you do your settings, <laughs> your clumping settings too high, you get those runaways. It's kind of like an air in the solver or something like that. So let's try lowering him down a little bit. Something like that. Um, and then that fly away, it might be like because our stiffness is 
Whoops. Too high. The Maybelline. <laughs> the Maybelline man. So we'll set that a little bit lower. And maybe sometimes even with these frictions, like if you just crank them way too high, you get those flyaways or explosions or whatever. So let's see if we sorted it out with those changes. So let's see if we fixed our runaway. He got scared. He was like, don't, don't crumble me up. Whoop. So it looks like we, I don't know, this this one here is doing it now. Uh, one thing you can do on the solver, I think they have like a max acceleration or something like that. So you can use it to, to prevent some of this stuff from happening maybe. So let's take a look at that. So if I go to my pop grains, they have max acceleration here. We might want to go down, I don't know, maybe 10. We'll see what happens. Then maybe my iterations, like I've had it before where you just do too many iterations and it can cause blow ups or issues like that. It seems like with grains, it's like, you get results pretty quickly, but then anytime you try to really like boost settings to get really pristine results, it kind of blows up. It's like, it's more of a, it's just like a quick rough and dirty solver. It's not necessarily like a uh, precision stable. It's, a, it's very unstable, I guess. So it looks like lowering those constraint iterations, it's, his face is breaking up a little bit more. We're getting less detail and definition. It could still be... It could be good, but it's a little bit too much. So we'll go back to maybe 160. I don't know if this acceleration messed it up or not. So it's hard to tell. It's like the, because the solver is unstable, it's usually a good idea just to like work quickly. Anytime you're going to like too long of, of frames and getting issues, it's maybe because you've like really jacked up the parameters to be way too high. I think we still have a, we still have a runaway. All right, I'm gonna go back in here. Um, I'm gonna increase drag. I don't know, maybe, maybe that wasn't the best idea. So let's see, this shock scaling power can be an issue sometimes. That's kind of what causes the like bounciness, like when it initially lands and then like springs back up. I believe it's related to this shock scaling power. Um, I'm 
let me see. I don't know what this drift threshold is. Maybe we want to use it here. I think it's basically saying like stop things from just slowly uh, moving or, or sliding apart or whatever. Let's give this a try. Could have, could be blowing up. I don't know. Could be better. Looks like stuff is at least staying together a little bit better. So with that shock scaling power that I decreased, I believe that's what's, it's no longer like a secondary bounce. We still have, he's still sliding off quite a bit. escaping all right so I'm gonna get rid of more more of his the back of his head maybe this angle here is just a bit extreme. So I'm gonna get him more parallel with the ground. And then, uh, maybe just reduce that drag. Whoa, way too many. <laughs> reduce the constraint iterations a little bit and uh, gonna go a little bit higher with the frictions maybe a little bit higher with the stiffness as well Let's see what happens So I'm working a little bit too quickly, I think, like adjusting parameters. Usually if I was doing this, not recording or whatever, I'd be making less changes before trying out the settings, but I'm just kind of in a rush to try to get something looking good in, in quick time. So it looks like we're still, still blowing up. Let's, let's, let's dig around in here. I'm gonna, Stop doing that. Sometimes the shock scaling power, maybe if you go the other way and uh, boost it. And then these frictions, I'm just gonna bring them back down. I feel like we had something pretty stable and then I, I don't know if I got too greedy with the settings or it was like around the time that I rotated Maybe when I was started to do the clip, we might have uh, fixed it with those those changes. Oof! It's a big. <laughs> it's possible that um, too much of his head is like stuck together right now. Hitting, it's hitting in a nice way, but I think it's just too much is uh, stuck together. So we'll go into um, our wrangle. I'm just gonna make my particles a little bit bigger. 
so it's easier to see the pattern we're doing. Um, so I'm going to introduce one more layer, kind of use it like a slice, or like a cutter. So I'm just going to have this override the color for right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, I feel like it's, uh, I don't know, it might not be the best advice, but it's interesting to see just how people fix or work around or just deal with the issues that come up. Um, so I'm going to use this noise pattern as like a, a mask just to um, slice, slice things up. Instead of remapping for right now, um, I want to look at the actual noise. Is it, my chat has slowed up? Try, try some more, am I just on a delay maybe? Or before you actually see your, your message come up on the, uh, in the channel. I don't know, it looks like my bitrate, uh, all the settings and stuff are good on my end. So I'm going to do an absolute value. So this noise goes below zero. So if I do absolute value, now you can see um, we don't have any negative numbers anymore. Did that one, that still looked pretty slow to update? And then I'm going to introduce the fit function again. So we'll do 0 0.1, 0 0.125. And then instead of zero to one, I'm just gonna go one to zero to flip it around. Maybe less uh, roughness. Let me try going a little bit lower, 22 seconds. So you can see what I'm trying to do here is get these kind of veins, structures or things like that. I don't know. I don't know if it's this Chatterino that I'm using, or if it's just Twitch. Twitch backend is slow. Let me try a, a thing here and see what happens. It's it's pretty quick. Must be must be an issue with like Twitch or something like that. I'm not sure. So. I'm going to increase the frequency. That seemed a little bit high. Um, and then these minimum values um, is basically like the width of these structures. <laughs> yeah, I've heard all a bunch of different countries are having problems with their internet because it's everyone's just streaming, doing all this stuff. So now we basically have a mask, um, and instead of going zero to one, we'll just go from z uh, instead of going from one to zero, we're going to go zero to one. So just invert it, flip it around. Um, and basically, what I want to do with this is multiply it with the existing noise values. So if we don't use it, we have this kind of stuff. And then if I turn it on, you can see basically we're using this to cut out or separate chunks so that things aren't, um, his entire face won't stick together as one piece. I think that was part of the problem. Let's give this another, another go. The absolute function is basically just saying anything that's below zero, make it a positive number. Um, I don't know if there's, if that makes sense or if there's an easier way to explain it. Um, but basically it's, it, you could replicate it if you were writing code or the pseudocode is like, if the number, the value is less than zero, multiply by negative one is basically what it's doing. There was, uh this it's not necessarily a clamp because you're not like discarding or or overriding the values you're basically just um 
I guess a, a better way to think of it is like if you're imagining um, numbers as like distance from the origin, from zero, like it's saying regard the disregard the sign, whether it's positive or negative, and just tell me how far I am from from the origin or from zero. So if I just have I'll make this a little bit simpler, um, the sign of X or just multiplying it by four. I don't probably don't even need that. So we'll just do the unit sine wave. Um, so absolute is just gonna take any of these ones that go below and turn them into positive numbers. So now we have kind of like a bouncing ball or something like that. So it's it's kind of just saying, the give me the distance from the origin. I don't know, that might be a easier way to think about it. Our guy is still taking off. The hell is going on? All right, let's reduce the stiffness. So I just took off a zero, uh, like divided by 10, essentially. So this graph toy is a pretty cool, uh, <laughs> yeah, no worries. I probably went on too long with the delay of just over explaining it or whatever, but it's useful. This graph toy is a pretty good um, applet or whatever for making functions and visualizing them. So you can, you can start to get carried away or whatever with a lot of different absolutes, but a useful kind of utility function. And just like keep keep using it again and again. So it looks like that wasn't the issue. So I'll go back to my stiffness iterations. I feel like they have something that's called sleeping that's uh would put like basically stopped particles it tells the solver to ignore them but i'm not sure i don't remember where the best way is to set that They have this awakened one that's meant to, to be used with sleeping, I think, but um, I don't remember which one they would have you used to actually put the ones to uh, sleep. But they also had, uh, they have the stopped attribute, is that? So I think under, it's not vellum that I'm using right now, I'm just using the regular grains. So I know they have this sh shelf tool, auto sleep. Maybe we'll just give that a click. So it looks like it put it in. I don't know if this is gonna do both. <laughs> we'll see what happens. All right, just give this a try. So the idea with that sleeping um, is basically when particles settle in, it uh, tells the solver to ignore them. So not only should this perhaps speed things up, but I think that might be part of the issue. It's like there's a lot of undercurrents or like residual motion. It looks like he's still flying away. Maybe he's not getting as far. I think I might know it. 
So I think another issue maybe <laughs> It looks like I was being silly and uh, my noises that I was visualizing, I wasn't actually using them. So let's drop that one in. What, what an amateur mistake. Yeah, so that's what was causing some of the problems. So you guys understand what, uh, <laughs> what that issue was? So I'm going to reduce the stiffness again and see if that... I don't know how these things are flowing up. No. Happy Friday. Good to see you, RH2. Let's try going back down with this shock scale in. So uh, something happened when I was adding these, uh, all these noises to mess stuff up. So I'm gonna try to keep these numbers a little bit closer to one so we don't we're not boosting things up too high. Looks like that might have fixed these uh, those kind of issues. So I think, like I was saying, that bounce is being caused by shock scaling. Uh, but I'm just going to let this play out and see if we can Still a bit of a mess. Let's go back to one, maybe two with that. With this pop drag, I'm just gonna add that to be higher to get like overall dampening. Let's try turning this guy back on. Looks like we still have some weirdness happening. All right, let's go back. The issue could have popped up when I was adding the sub steps. I think sometimes with the grains, like when you go too high with the sub steps, it basically causes uh, things to become unstable at a certain point. That makes sense. It's just like too much, too many iterations of forces that it's adding and doing stuff in. So it looks like we have our, our guy behaving a little bit more realistically now. There's some weird stuff happening, for sure, but we'll uh, we'll ignore it for right now. So let me see under my sheet. I think with uh, just particles, it might just be the stopped attribute. So you can like force things to be stopped with this. I don't know if that's the same as sleeping or not. We'll see. So you see there's like little explosions or jitters or whatever that's still happening, but for right now, like I'm just trying to make a still image. So we'll just keep going with it. Um, 
So my particle count is pretty low now. Just make this higher. Try to get overall detail looking better. Um, this setting should put us back into closer to the 1 million range, maybe. What did we get here? Still, still updating. Three million, three, three and a half million. Let's give it a try and see what happens. So we'll go back to one for the point size. Turn that off. And uh, maybe we'll try to visualize it from that angle. Could be, we'll see if it takes too long with, with uh, 3 million. 3 million would be pretty close to like as high as I want to push it or as high as I want to, uh, as much detail as we need, I think, for, for what we're trying to do right now. So it looks like we're at uh, five seconds or t maybe 10 seconds of frame. Quicker than that, I think, maybe five seconds of frame. We could probably keep going with these settings. So unfortunately with grains, like those settings don't, your, your results will probably change quite a bit after changing the overall uh, P scale or spacing of them, the size of them. There isn't really a good way to like change that and, and keep all the forces consistent or like enough that you're getting the same pattern. But hopefully it's similar enough that we don't have to keep dialing in the settings. So if we get something reasonable out of this, probably move into like rendering and, and see what happens. So with this stuff flattening out, it might be a signal that we need more like constraint iterations because we're trying to stack so many particles like instead of things being 10 10 particles high we're now trying to do like 40 particles so it's more more math or more stuff for the, the solver to figure out so let's go up to here i'm just going to save it as a new version I'm not going to mess with that sub steps. I feel like it's a cursed parameter for me today. Um, we'll go up to like 170, maybe even 220 for constraint iterations. Um, and then I'm going to put down a file cache. And so I usually do this after my attribute, um, the grain solver or pop solver in general adds like a lot of attributes that you don't necessarily need. Um, so it just fills up your disk, takes up a lot of un unnecessary space. So the only thing I really need is like my point position. It will just automatically keep that. Um, and then P scale, so just make sure that it has them. Then we should be good to go. Um, this will just be grain drop. And uh, I don't know if I need 240 frames. We'll just do like 70, 72. So I'll just save it. And do save the disk in background. Sometimes that one doesn't work for me. 
still not working. Um, we'll just maybe try. Just hit save to disk here. Um, it's not the best workflow, but sometimes I'll just open up the same file with uh, with another session of Houdini. So now I can just view the results or whatever as that other Houdini is cooking. You just have to be careful if you're doing this not to make a bunch of changes or do too many things with the other copy because like you could diverge the settings of, of both Houdini's and get yourself into a mess pretty quickly. So I'm just going to use this to like visualize I might start to set up render stuff if it turns out nicely but for right now we'll just uh, inspect the simulation as it goes to see if there's stuff I need to clean up. So I'm hoping with the increased constraint iterations to get more stacking or these chunks to, uh, to stay together a little bit more. Sometimes with this tessellation, if you turn the level of detail down to like 0 0.01, then you can still copy to points and it will be quicker. Basically like just telling the viewport to draw the uh, primitives or the particles that it's dropping with uh, less complexity, or less like subdivisions or tessellation or whatever. Uh, so now you can see I can more like interactively pan around just that uh, tessellation level of detail if you do like 10% of 1% of the, the original setting. Oh no, <laughs> it's completely falling apart. So let's interrupt this. Splush. He got smushed too hard. I'm just going to be careful to go into my original Houdini. Um, let's go to the grains and then with this stiffness, let's go back up. Maybe. What is this? 500,000? So we'll try to get this uh, just to retain more of these structures and things like that. It looks like we have enough detail now that we can get a pretty uh, interesting, like realistic composition or whatever. So we have some, some good tools that we can use if we want to art direct it further, like changing, just rotating, um, the face, maybe you want like one of these eyes to start to fall apart, like if it's landing closer to the ground than, uh, than the other one. Or maybe if he's like crumbling from the chin up to the forehead or something, that would be another interesting animation or, or layout to do. Let's see, we're up to frame six. It looks like we're getting a frame every 10 seconds. It's still pretty good for the the resolution that we're working at. So 
so it looks like we're getting better better um, structures I'm just flipping between the two caches kind of should be pretty nice Maybe this one already cached. I think so. So we'll probably need maybe 20 or 30 frames before uh, we're, we're where we're at with the composition or with the amount of like smush, the amount of crumbling that we need. Uh, so we'll just let this keep keep going for a little bit longer. Sorry about all the errors and, and blunders along the way. This These Friday things, I'm just trying to do like a completely fresh draft. Like how you would approach something if your art director just gave you a topic, a frame or a style to, to achieve. So I don't, I, I don't know, I kind of, I want to preserve like the stumbling blocks and the, the blunders so you can see how people work around it. Too many times, like too many tutorials I see is just people, they already know the numbers and the values to use to get the result they want. So they aren't uh, explaining like the decision making process along the way. So is he still flattening out too much? He might be. Smush. He's gone. <laughs> All right, let's let's interrupt that. We have to be careful here. We don't we don't want to make too many changes. Let's go back up to six. Might have been too high. Let's do more stiffness. I'm gonna increase my frictions. This guy's quite high. Maybe just increase the particle scale or the grain separation so we're working a little bit more quickly. So I'm gonna let this run again. It should be going a little bit faster now that I increase the resolution. We'll just try to sort out those, uh, those last few issues. make sure that this isn't blowing up at the start. All right, I think it's looking good. Working. It's not a complete disaster. All right, I'll let this um, simulate. So it looks like maybe we're at five seconds of frame now. It's better working a little bit, I don't know, six or seven seconds. I'll be right back. done it. So it's bouncing. <laughs> That's better than pancaking.
Yeah, it looks it looks a little bit better for what I'm trying to achieve. <laughs> yeah, I think we're getting close to, to just doing the top down cam and, and rendering. Um these guys might still be drifting apart a little bit, but we're getting some good stuff happening. Like these frames right here could already be usable for um, for what we're trying to do. So I think we did we did it. How? We got it. All right. So. This scene I wasn't really doing anything too too special with. It's just visualizing. I'm not gonna make any more changes to it. Uh, this one, we'll save it as version three. Just remember that that was the first usable, like good results we got, that it's a good save point to have. Um, what I might do is get another, Get another um, version, lower point separation, and work this time. Sometimes after you give it a break, it will start to save in background. But maybe crash my Houdini when I did that. So let's <laughs> see if it. I don't know if it uh, got that. Just let it let it do its thing for a little bit. Just like see if it was able to send off that task or not. If I do So I'm just searching and it does look like I'm running that H batch process. So it was able to run that in background. Was like the Call of Duty, like you're dying, your your corpse is like crawling around, and you <laughs> right before it crashed, it sent off the uh, the background task. So let's see if we're getting any frames. Looks like we are. So I'm doing almost five million with those ones in the background. Um, we'll just let that keep processing and we'll start to set up the camera with the lower resolution cache. So if that well, this is kind of like a Hail Mary that I'm doing with this higher resolution thing, um, I'm just gonna let it calculate. So we'll turn this one back to like 0 0.01. Let's try to pick maybe this. a little bit further. I think we had like 40 frames to work with or something like that. So this, something like this seems good. You can still make out some of the eye and the nose and stuff like that. So I don't want to move, I don't have enough detail right now that I can't move in too close. So I'm just gonna frame everything like this make the camera I usually just set this to 36 for the sensor size and then this one I'm just going to use as a visualization I'm gonna make another output node. I'm just gonna, if you hold down the T button, and then click, then you'll render uh, this from this node. And then under redshift, uh, I can do particles. Should automatically read the P scale attribute when I do that. 
uh, I'll just go to redshift over there and whoops, control Z. So I want to free myself from the camera and then I'm just gonna go in now and put in a light. So control click on the light and should be good. So if I just do redshift render view, uh, then this will automatically make a redshift render wrap when I start it. Done, final, <laughs> we did it. No, it's a good, good place to be at though for the first render frame. So let's see, we finished eight frames of that more detailed cache. See what happens if we view frame number eight. Is it going to be better? It might be. So I haven't fallen down enough. So we'll let it keep going. Um, so one thing. Maybe we could reduce our p-scale a little bit. Um, that should let some light lead in. We'll get some of that happening. We might want to turn on bounce lighting on the um, redshift settings. We'll just go here. Give it some bounce. And uh, Give a, make a material for these particles. So we'll do the RS material builder. And by default, I think this starts with just the same thing as like plastic. You go to it. Maybe the IOR changed a little bit. Um, so if I want this stuff to be like a powder, we do a pretty rough plastic, maybe less IOR, less reflectivity, uh, just so it's a more diffuse um, kind of material. We'll just wire up that material. Maybe we'll make a ground plane. We'll see what we want to happen. It's possible we, uh, it's like black on white silhouette could be nice, but just for bounce lighting and, and things like that, we might end up turning this uh, primary ray visibility off just to get, uh, to keep this background as still black. Let's take a look at our background process, this background task. What are we at here, 12? See what frame 12 looks like. Ooh, not one. I think my computer is doing too much heavy lifting right now, so my, my UI is a little laggy. Could be good. Let's just blast off with a render. So, because I'm saving that P scale attribute from the simulation. Uh, it's basically the grain size or particle sep like grain separation parameter on my source um, that will carry over to the renderer with Redshift. It, it looks at that p-scale attribute and will set up the particle size based on that. I could be running into issues. Uh-oh. My OBS is dropping all of the frames. I'm getting one FPS right now. Let's see if I can stop it. <laughs> yeah, so maybe I, I will um, hold off on the redshift renders for right now. <laughs> 
Yeah, I was trying to look into adding another, uh, I'd like an old GPU sitting around. Yeah, we turn into audio only mode for a little bit. So what I might have to do is just kill this, the background process at a certain point. Um, I'm just gonna make sure that that um, to make sure the results we're getting are usable. So it looks like I have some guys that are flying away. So if I look at this, my bounding box is getting super big um, and that can cause problems or that might've been what was crashing the Redshift renderer. So when I like home my view, you can see everything spacing out quite a bit. So if you just do a group, group node, you can set it to points, um, go to bounding regions. So I'm just gonna do 10 by 10 by 10. Um, what this will do is just make a group with almost everything. Let me see if I can get this. So under my, my new group, group one, it's like almost all of the points. You can see it's missing like six or seven of them. So I think those are the ones that, that shot around. Yeah, so I'm doing this group by bounding regions, which is because we're working at the origin, we can just leave this box center at zero, zero, zero. Um, and then under this blast, just do that with the group. You just leave that as group one or whatever. All right. So now you can see my min and max particle distance is um, not su a super big value anymore. So sometimes renders or geometry in general, just when you, it, it would probably be a better idea to do this like within the simulation, uh, but f for right now it's okay to do it afterwards. It was just never a good idea to have stuff shooting off and super far from uh, where you're working at. So we're at frame 20. Let's take a look at that. So I don't know, it could be. Could be blowing up a little bit too much. Or it could have even like frozen. Take a look. I'm gonna kill. Stop that. And we might just end up working from here. Let's take a look. So it looks like I can render stuff now. I'm not completely dropping some frames, but it's not terrible. Um, so I'll just go into the material. I'm just gonna make this color all the way to white. I think it was working a little bit better without uh, this background visible. Um, so we'll just set that primary ray. And then we'll jump into the light. So just see how much contrast if I lower it, you can kind of just get more shadows, kind of carve out more of these details. If we raise it, everything kind of flattens out. So we'll try to get something here with the face. This, this one from the side could be pretty cool. Yeah, it's... I'd like to spend more time on the, the simulation and get it stable with uh, a little bit more particles, but 
I'm working with what I have in the time in the time limit. I don't know. It's generally good just to have some kind of uh, timer going when you're working, even by yourself, to keep your keep your progress going. Otherwise, you can get locked away just making tweaks forever. So I'm gonna leave this this line where it is right there, like that, that harsh shadow. Um, what I'm gonna do is take the ground plane grid, just hold down Alt, make a copy of it. So this one is gonna be more like a bounce card to kick some light back onto things. So we'll see if maybe the light hits that, reflects back, and then we get some, some fill. So it might be a little bit too close. Whoops. So I just want some, some stuff happening. So if I turn that off, you can see it's just just adding a little bit so our shadows aren't going down completely to uh, to black, just to leave some information in there. And uh, let's go back to the camera, see what I can do with these. Go to a longer lens, maybe. Whoops. So I just need to lock lock the camera in. So it could be cool to frame up something where it's like just the region of the powder. Get some of that breaking. Might go... Looks like I don't have a ton of frames to play around with. Because the other one like blew up a little bit. Um, so I'll just leave this here. Maybe dropping down the angle a little bit. And I think, like I was saying earlier, um, global scale multiplier, we could shrink down these the particles a little bit more. Um, should give us more like light bleeding in to things could look a little bit weird at times because you do have these gaps between the particles. I think my light is a little bit low. I'm just going to bring it up a little bit more. I think that scale multiplier wasn't the best idea for right now. The magnet ball physics size? Yeah, aren't those... Uh... So that's, I think that's kind of like what, um, what was happening with the grain settings of, uh, of uh, clump or attraction weight and attraction stiffness. So with the, the attributes that I was doing, um, I think that's kind of like simulating I mean, it's not a magnetic field, but it's what causes the, the particles to like stick together or adhere together. Um, I'm just gonna turn off my simulation for right now. They also have this pop interact node. It's kind of like, I think doing what you're talking about. Um, so this will, by default, cause the particles to push each other apart, but I think you can set this to negative numbers. Um, I think if you also do the pop proximity, um, I think this one is just recording information about what, what is nearby to them. Um, it might just be pop property. Thank you. 
This one has a cling parameter. They use, I don't know what, they might have renamed it. Um, maybe pop interact. They had, they, there was always a parameter with particles that was like charge, where you could do either negative or positive and that would cause them to stick together or push apart. If they might have renamed it to um, this pop interact. So I think you can just set this to like negative or positive numbers. And all of these things can be, you can override them with attributes. Like if you do vex, vex expressions, uh, you could just type in your, your attribute that you want to use for it. So let's see, this, this thing could be cool. It's like a artifact. If I go down to the camera too low, it's uh, too hard to read. Yeah, it's kind of, um, I think they call those like a buckyball. I don't know if that's right. This is like the Buck Buckminster Fuller or something. I think it's kind of like this, this kind of idea a little bit. You get the, them like packing together and they probably clump together pretty. Like if you drop it, if you drop one of these toys, you get an interesting distribution. The Neo Cube. This thing looks pretty cool. You have to order these individually. All right. So I'm, I'm going to, oh, that's just their branded name of it. Um, I'm gonna bring out the camera a little bit just because I'm kind of working with what I have. So it's gonna look like it, the closer we zoom in, the, the more you'll see the individual particles or the spheres. So I don't wanna do too much of that right now. Um, this one's getting a somewhat interesting angle. Maybe something like that. I don't know. Maybe focusing, we focus more on like the forehead region. I might want to probably be a good idea to like rework some of these noises and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's um, something's not quite right right now. Maybe this this lighting is a little bit better. So I just use the like the backslash hotkey or whatever to switch between the light, the camera and the light that I'm using. Yeah, the clumpy stuff is nice. I'd, it'd be nice to change the, uh, to run some more simulations. You have some, some uh, example of these balls. So this composition is somewhat nice. Oh wow, they have different. Ooh. Yeah, I think you could get something like this using grains. Um, I'm just using pop grains right now because I think it's a little bit faster, perhaps. But I think it's like less settings to worry about, maybe. Um, but I think vellum, you can get more that. You can get a little bit better results. You just have to spend more time kind of tweaking things.
So something like this could be nice. Um, one thing you can do, it's not the best way to do it. Like up here, I might want to add uh, the jitter so that these aren't perfectly lined up. Either that or you just want a higher resolution so you can't see them. Um, if I do another jitter, I can use the P scale and say like, shake these around by a quarter of their, their radius. Um, and then this way you might be able to get, you might be able to break up a little bit of that grid pattern. If you do it too much, then you get, um, you might get some like inner penetration stuff. Maybe it's, it's enough that it confuses your, your eyes so you, you can, uh, you don't notice it. I don't know, I think this, if I had more more clumps and more resolution and stuff like that, um, this would be a, a good result that I was pretty proud of, but right now it's, it's too low of a resolution. It's, I think it's pretty cool to see, like, you, you kind of make out some of the features. It's pretty much what I was going for, with some of the mouth and stuff like that, and then everything else is, like, crumbled up. So I'm going to save this, just go one more version up. So you kind of have to like keep track in your head if you're do working this way, but like version 3 I know is my good simulation settings. This is going to have my latest render lighting. Um, and then version 4 was my like trial. I still have those settings in, in here, but that was my trial on like boosting the, the resolution, but things kind of fell apart with it. So with this exposure, I can work with things and get stuff maybe looking a little bit better. Something like that could be cool. Doesn't look good enough yet, like super close, but it's, it's starting to look cool just as like a, a thumbnail or whatever. Um, so just save that again. I'm gonna do another Houdini um, just to talk about the, the vellum stuff pretty quickly. So you can, um, you could switch to, to vellum grains pretty easily, I think. If I just go into a new scene, um, just do like a box. And then if I go back to vellum up here, do vellum grains, um, just very quickly get like a setup made with that. Um, I believe the set, these settings use the same parameters. So you can, as like a trial, like compare the two one to one pretty easily. Um, it's hard to know exactly where to look. Maybe with sleeping, it would have helped me to have that parameter there. So yes, yeah, so I think attraction weight. So these attraction weight and attraction stiffness are named the same. So I could have, I could port these settings over and, and try it. Um, I've, I've done some pretty high resolution tests with grain, it might, with uh, vellum grains, and it might be more stable as well. Uh, so that might be something to look at going forward. So you could also go, I think, if you hit the question mark here, um, you just have to be careful. Sometimes with these parameters, it doesn't always let you override them with, with attributes. So if I go under, yeah, so it's saying you can still use this attraction weight. Sometimes it's not always um, 
right in their help. I don't know, they tend to move stuff around pretty much. Like it's hard, it's always hard for me to find those attributes. That's why I made that uh, document. You could assign different materials if you wanted to on two groups. Um, I think the best way to do it is just with like a split, like delete them and split them into two chains and render them that way. Um, if you're just doing two materials, like it doesn't, it doesn't work that well. Sometimes if you're overriding a bunch of particles at the stop, like at the attribute level in the shader, if you're doing like 5 million particles with per, per particle shader attributes that can mess it up. So it's usually better just to make two different shaders. Um, so if I, I look under here, geometry attributes, this is where you can, yeah, so that jitter, it's on the, the grain source node. So I don't know, it might be in a different section for, I think, I think they added somewhere you find like all the vellum attributes in one place. Sometimes too, if you look, like each node has its own help document. But um, sometimes they put like the master might be on the object, the source. This is why I made that document though, because it's like, it's frustrating to, <laughs> you keep having to dig around and look at like 20 different help documents to find things. So let's look at this. Vellum grain constraints. Um, so delete two groups to split into two different object nodes. Yeah, you can do that. That would be like the best. I don't know. It depends on, on the way you want to work. So I don't know this. This doesn't have the attributes either. Maybe the vellum solver is the best place to find them. It gets a little bit confusing, I think, because some sometimes some attributes don't, you can't override them or they don't work with OpenCL, so you have to be a bit careful. But I think we could keep using those if we wanted to. We'll just get rid of that for right now. Um, yeah, I mean, so if you're doing two different materials, like, I don't know what the I don't know what the best way is to, to make a quick thing, but um, if I, I could just do like at p dot x is greater than zero. Um, so this would just be like half of them. And then I just have to set that value to something. So we'll set it to color. So like if I wanted these two two sides of the screen or two two sides of the origin or the x-axis to be different materials, um, I'm just visualizing it this way. But if I put this directly into a split parameter, a split stop, um, then we could separate these chains out. I think I just have to set this to points. Um, and then usually what I do is like another output node that I would reference um, with a different object or if you're feeling adventurous you can do like this material right here and then assign stuff to a, a redshift object um, sometimes the I've had problems where the parameters don't update as interactively as this like object level material seems to be the most trustworthy Sometimes it's a little bit cumbersome, um, depending on your workflow. Like pe sometimes people like to work all in one object. So it's just, it's just up to you with that. So that's how you could do two different materials. You might be able to get more advanced and like run some detection, like see how many particles are nearby and then change materials 
that way so that the crumbly like fuzzy ones get a, a slightly different material but um other than that it's pretty much the, the way to go i think we're getting close to ending the stream here uh so it's a somewhat reasonable result i'm going to probably play around with this some more and see if i can get stuff holding up at a higher resolution um but i'll post maybe a couple of these versions like version three was my good simulation settings and then this one is my lighting uh, design file so we'll probably post version three and version five um, if anyone has any questions now's your chance to to get them in so just to review um this was my reference stuff right here just this powdery kind of cosmetic makeup get trying to get an interesting pattern keeping like his face features intact while other areas are, are able to fully uh, dissolve and like release into the smaller uh, particulates or smaller chunks. This one's pretty cool right here. But yeah, that's it. So just save this again, make sure it's current. Um, I'm posting the link in the Discord. If you, if you don't, if you haven't joined it, you can find the link to the Discord in, I don't know because Twitch updated their panels, but it's somewhere in the About Me or one of the sections you'll be able to see it. Uh, other than that, I hope everyone enjoys the rest of the Friday, whatever time zone you're in. Hope you have a good night, good morning, the rest of the day. See you guys tomorrow. So I'll, I'll still do the, the weekend ones. All right, take it easy.